I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. As you can imagine, we have a lot of scrap fabric laying around at Shabby Fabrics after we cut kits and block of the month programs. So I have been looking for ways to find projects I can either do with a group or with my family that uses up some of those scraps. Now this is a project that I have done when I was a kid, except instead of using fabric on these um, ornaments, we used paper. Um, but this is such a great way to use up literally small scraps of fabric. Now what I've got in my hands is just a plastic ornament um, and we're going to be covering it with strips of fabric. In a previous video when I showed you how to make the quilted Christmas ornaments, I used um, uh, strips, two and a half inch strips. These were the Dinkle Pops from Hoffman and of course I had a lot of strips left over. So you, even if you have maybe bought a jelly roll, we can cut that into smaller strips that can be used for this project. So let me show you how to go about doing that. These are three of the Jingle Pop strips that I had left over from making my quilted Christmas ornament. And I chose the three reds because I really love red and they, they just look so good together on um, this ornament. So let me show you what we will do. These strips are two and a half inches wide and that's way too wide for this particular project. So what we will do is we'll cut this into four inch segments in width. And then we'll cut a couple of these. Then we're gonna cut that in half down the length. And it doesn't, there's nothing magical about the four inches. Notice I did that very quickly. It's just an approximation. And then I'm gonna cut that in half. So that'd be about one and a quarter. So let me just cut that and I'll put that off to the side. And that's probably more than enough because we're going to use all three fabrics. In fact, I'll cut these two at the same time and save us even more time. So four inch sections. And then we'll cut that down the middle. we'll be on our way. Now, of course, we have a beautiful selection of fabrics um, on our website. So if you don't have a stash of fabrics or maybe you're looking for these specific fabrics, of course, there's always a nice assortment, but you know, don't feel like that's something you need to do. Probably if you have a stash of fabric, you have enough of a variety that you could build some of your own beautiful ornaments with the fabrics you already have. So your next supply, beside the fabric, of course, will be the Mod Podge. Now, I like to use the gloss. Mod Podge comes in a variety of lusters. Um, satin is one of them, so if you don't want any shine on your ornament, you would choose the satin. I like the glossy look, um, and so this is the gloss. This is a plastic ornament. I've also seen these done with glass ornaments. Both work just as well. I chose the plastic, so if I drop it, it's not a big deal, um, but either works just as well. You do want some ribbon for your hanger of your ornament. And on this particular ornament, because it had more of a vintage look, I did something called sugaring. And all that is is actually using kind of a chunky glitter and it gives it that kind of vintage um, sparkly look. And this is some glitter. I mean, I've had this for, I don't know, 20 years. Um, and so you don't need to go run out and get new supplies. What you have will be probably way more, this, more than sufficient. Now the other ornament, there's no glitter on that at all and it's just as beautiful. So that's an option, glitter or no glitter. And, that, and then you'll need a sponge brush and that'll be brushing on our Mod Podge. So let's get going. This is so much fun. You do want a work area that can get a little bit goopy. Um, so I will bring in this whiteboard that I have. You may want to pour the Mod Podge into a shallow bowl. I will just be using it straight out of the bottle today, 
but if you're gonna have this open for any amount of time, it's probably good to put that in a shallow bowl just as much as you think that you'll need and put the top back on so it doesn't start drying on you. So let's get started. So you'll dip in with your sponge brush. And we've mentioned that the strips of fabric are four inches long, so you're just gonna brush on at least four inches, any direction. We're just gonna start putting on our first strip of fabric. And I'll start with the polka dot. So I'm gonna get that on. Then I'm gonna go back over top of that. And I'm gonna secure that. Now I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that already looks terrible. <laughs> the Mod Podge dries clear. And I'll tell you what else we're gonna do right now. Let's go ahead and take the top of the ornament off. That's gonna work out way better for us. Let's take that off. We'll put that aside. We don't wanna get glue on that. Now you can just hold the ornament like this or you can actually turn it upside down, put your finger inside and work with the fabric that way. It's almost easier to work with it, and that, that way it keeps your hands away from the Mod Podge too. So I've got this down, and I'm trying to smooth out any bubbles. You almost can't put on too much Mod Podge. You don't want it to be in puddles, but you almost can't put on too much at this point. Now the next piece, I'm gonna have it cross the first. I'm going to choose a different fabric. Maybe I like this one. So we'll have it cross that. So it's securing the first piece. Put that on. Brushing it through. And this is how you will continue throughout this entire ornament. You're just gonna keep laying strips on, smoothing them out, crisscrossing them. So maybe the next one I wanna come here. There's no rhyme or reason. So you just, you can't do it wrong. Isn't that nice? There's no wrong way to do this. So maybe I'll do the poinsettia fabric now. Okay, and of course we'll repeat that process. Now I will continue like this all the way across the entire ornament, crisscrossing, until I cannot see any more of the clear ball anymore. I should only see fabric. We'll do one more strip together so I show you how I close those areas that have, or cover those areas like that. And then I will be off camera and I will put the rest of the fabric on, again, completely random. I'm just gonna grab strips and put them on. Okay, I'm gonna cover that area. And I like, uh, maybe I'll do this one again. See, I covered that spot up. Now I don't have to go back in this area because it's been completely covered up. Okay, so I'll brush on more Mod Podge. I will do the same thing all the way around the rest of the ornament. And then I will show you um, how we finish this project. Now that your ornament is completely coated with fabric and smoothed down all the little edges, I like to put the ornament upside down 
on a surface where I know it won't be disturbed and it'll dry. And that typically takes, depending on how thick you put the Mod Podge down, typically it takes a couple of hours. Then at that point, you want to come back with the Mod Podge again and you can start building the luster by putting on additional coats. Again, I would pick the, assuming this is dry now, fast forward in time, I would put that back on my finger, get my brush back out, and I would just brush the Mod Podge on again, set it down to dry, and I would do that multiple times. Now, if you do want to do what's called the sugaring with the glitter, what you would do is don't put that glitter on now. You would wait until you've put your very last coat of Mod Podge on. The more coats you put on, the glossier it will get if you're buying the gloss version of the Mod Podge. On that very last um, application of the Mod Podge, let's pretend like we're there at this point, you would take your glitter, and this one has a little bit of um, holes in the top, So, and then you would just sprinkle this on. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to do that when the Mod Podge is really wet. You're gonna sprinkle that on. And just as before, turn it um, that end up to dry. Once it's completely dry, you'll put the top back in and then you'll find a pretty ribbon and you'll just decide how long you want that length to be. I like a pretty long one. And then you will slip that through the little circle on the top of your ornament, such as this. Bring the ends together. Tie a knot. Like that. And then of course, your ornament will be completely finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on fabric covered ornaments.